Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see everybody. So Franco told you they were in Omaha. That's right. Yeah, well, he's right. I have to admit it. They are. It is so good to see all of you here today. Thank you all for being here and being a part of this day. And of course, as we come today, we, we come in, uh, as part of uh, Father's Day uh, celebration and remembrance. Uh, to all of you dads who are out there, uh, happy Father's Day to everybody. We want to welcome all who are joining in with us this morning for our morning worship service. It is our hope, it's always our hope, that as others can hear us and see us that God is ministering in their lives. And we pray that God's hand will touch, particularly those who do not know Christ yet. And that is always our hope and, and always. so we a big thanks to everyone who is, who is with us. This morning, you have a bulletin insert. Each of you received a bulletin insert. And this is a, a little liturgy that we do to, to honor those men who are not just fathers to us biologically, but fathers in the way they treat us and, and, and in the way they take care of us. So if you would join with me in reading, of course, I, this is responsive reading. For fathers everywhere, who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For men who may or may not have children of their own, but act like a father to someone in need of advice, support, nurturing, and love. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers too. For stepfathers who have assumed that role with love and joy, who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family. Holy God, hear this prayer for stepfathers. For adoptive fathers who have heard the call of God to lovingly step forward for those that need their care. For new fathers, full of hope. For long-time fathers, full of wisdom. For the fathers yet to be and the fathers soon to be. Holy God, hear our prayer for the fathers of your church. For those men who have shaped our lives without claim of family or kinship. For those who have taught us, guided us, shaped us, and molded us into servants of Christ our Lord. do this together. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Steve, and for all the uh, folks that are watching out there, I uh, want to say Happy Father's Day to everyone, and hope you have a wonderful day today. I want to ask everybody to stand. We're going to be singing out of the Celebration Hymnal this morning, and our first hymn this morning, we're going to sing all verses of This Is My Father's World. It's hymn number 143, 143. Let's all stand as we sing.
ask you to remain standing for our affirmation of faith. It's in your bulletin. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father Almighty, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. You may be seated. Our next hymn this morning is hymn number 552. I am thine, O Lord. We're going to sing all verses. Once again, 552. At this time, for ushers will come, we'll receive this morning's regular offering, and that'll be followed by our building fund offering this morning.
be seated. We're going to do one more song this morning, 793, uh, before we turn it over to Brother Steve this morning, but uh, it is uh, great to see Mr. Rick and Miss Lynn this morning with us this morning, worshiping with us here at Old Bethel. Once again, the uh, hymn is 793. We're going to sing all verses. This time we're going to turn it over to Brother Steve for this morning's message.
this morning. If you have your Bibles with you and would like to join with me in reading, uh, first I would have you turn to Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, and, and stick your bulletin in right there, Philippians chapter 4, we'll be coming back to that. And then once you've got your bulletin in place, then turn to Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. And when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as, as he was. And other little boats were also with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to no one, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. I imagine most of you, if not all of you, are, are like me. Every day when I rise, I thank the Lord for the day that lies ahead of me. My thoughts immediately go to, to what I need to accomplish that day, and, and I begin to implement my plan. But as I wake, I also wake up feeling satisfied and at peace. At peace that my family is safe, they're happy, and they're cared for. I look very forward to the first words that I will share with Angie. My world is, is good at that moment. I see the sunrise and and a new day emerging, I'm at peace. My mind is, is mostly clear and things are pretty quiet. Nothing is stirring so much outside. Those for me are blessed moments. I know that I am a blessed man. But just as surely as I know I am blessed, that I'm a blessed man as a husband, a father, a friend, and and pastor, I also know that there are others who do not wake up the same way. Life will bring moments that steals our peace and robs us of our joy. And I know that someday, someday when I rise, I too will not feel peace or hope, but instead worry and hurt, maybe some anger. I wish everything were like those good mornings. But I know that someday, at some time, life will do its cruel thing to me and rob me of it. I can't escape it. None of us can. But for me and for you, we do not have to immerse ourselves in life's afflictions. 
You and I, we, we have another place to go. I have been in the boat with the Lord on the calm days and the rough days. I'm sure all of you, all of you have too. There have even been days when, when I wondered if God really cared what, what was going on in this world and in my life or, or with me or with someone that I love. That is normal. That's what happens when you're afraid and worried. When the waves of this world are, are, are breaking over the bow of your boat. Ministry is not what you think it is. Neither is ministering. All of you do that, you know. It isn't just the preacher who does it. Ministry uh, allows you to be a part of the good things of, of our faith. It gives you an opportunity to, uh, to smile and rejoice at the good things that God is doing. It gives you an opportunity to be together, to shake hands and hug necks. Thank goodness we can do that again. It provides opportunities to talk about how good God is. That is most of what you will see and hear from, from preachers. Those are good days. Peaceful days. But then there are other moments. Most folks don't know what it's like to, to plan a funeral for a four-year-old. Or to sit with two people who are going in opposite directions to try to help them find a way to keep their marriage together. Most people do not know what it's like to visit a, a young person struggling to find their way out of depression. Or helping another young person plan how they're going to tell their parents that they're expecting a baby. Most do not know what it's like to offer an encouraging prayer for, for someone who has already made their plans to to journey to the great reward of their faith. Most cannot imagine listening to a child describe the abuse that they've endured all of their lives. Ministry is just like, it's just like life. There are times of peace. And there are times when we must find a way to survive the storms. But I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't already know because you too have, have walked those journeys yourselves. You've been out there on the water. Wondering where are you, Lord? Do you even care what's going on out here with us? Or maybe some of you don't have those questions, but you, you cling to something or to someone. You cling to, to Christ. You're praying with all of your heart, pleading that he will, he will give you the strength to get through a, to survive and manage your way through that storm. They lean mightily into their faith. They grab hold of it with all of their might. Their fingers and their toes are, are dug in. And they remind God that he always promises to help. And finally, we come to the end of our storm. And we remind ourselves that God is faithful. And that no matter what we endure or how tumultuous it may seem, we will eventually come out on the other side to a place where it is once again peaceful in our souls even when our surroundings are not so much. All of us have either experienced those moments or, or, or we know we will or we are there even now. Ministry and living takes us to places whether we want to go there or not. But we are Christians. We are followers of Christ. And we believe in the depths of our souls that no matter what comes to us, if Christ does not rescue us from them, then he will walk with us through them. That is our comfort. That is the, the best hope that we have. The scriptures say, the disciples said, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? They didn't know it at the time. But he was, he was God. He was the one who made the one to make the wind to blow and set the boundaries of the sea. They didn't know the power that he possessed. 
They didn't know that he could turn turbulent waters into a tranquil sea. They didn't know it at the time. They, they could not help themselves. But we do. We know what God, our Heavenly Father, can do. We know that God can calm the storms. We know that he can stop the waves. We know that he can command all of creation and it will obey him. You and I know that and because we do, we can find a restful place even in the midst of troubles. We rest in our faith and it carries us through uh, to the other shore. That is who we are. That is the confidence we have because we serve Christ. We have a God-given, Holy Spirit-inspired strength to, to manage in the world and with its ways. Paul understood this. He lived it himself. Oh, to study Paul can become such an inspiration if you take the time. Most folks do not understand what Paul's life was like. Paul's life was under constant threat. Much of, of his writings is written at a time when he is literally chained to a Roman guard. In fact, today's writing comes from that very moment. Paul is chained to a Roman centurion as he pins the letter to the Philippians. Much of his work is with the threat of death at any moment hanging over his head. And yet he speaks of his work for Christ as a source of glory and joy. His faith instills in him a, a spirit of rejoicing. The world in front of him is ready to be cruel and destructive. But he keeps finding joy and a purpose and purpose in his life. All because, all because he believed in and sought to serve God. Jesus. That is what a walk with Christ is like. It isn't the absence of struggle or an ever-present calm sea. It is taking to the sea and knowing that God is in the boat with us. The disciples wondered if Jesus cared only because they had not yet learned who he was or the power he would bring into their lives. We know. We know. We know it in our hearts and in our souls. And we have grabbed on to the promise that Jesus is with us in everything that we face. We have strength that only God can provide and, and strength, to, strength to get through all that life may send our way. That, that is what makes us different than those who do not know Jesus Christ our Lord. I rise in the morning and I am blessed and confident that Christ is going to be walking with me through that day in my life. Yes, I, I know there will be a day, I know there will be a day when I need more than I, I will need that confidence more than I would like. Every hour and every moment lived on this earth cannot be blessed and and perfect. Life shows up and it blows across the waters until it makes things more turbulent than, than I can handle alone. There will come moments like that, as there already have, and I will have to remind myself of it. There will be a day, as there already has, when the greatest strength I can find is only in the knowledge that He is with me through all things. It's the same for all who believe in Jesus. We are blessed. We have a Heavenly Father who is always with us. But there's a whole world out there that cannot say that. What a tragedy that is. So much God has always wanted to do for them and yet they have no interest. 
Our Heavenly Father wants to hold them and love them like the finest dad in all the universe. And yet they won't let him. Why would anyone choose to go it alone? Why would they want to feel there was someone, why wouldn't they want to feel there was someone who was walking with them, who loved them, walking alongside of them in this world and, and through this life? Why do they not understand the, uh, the loneliness and abandonment they feel? That it can be overcome if they choose. Why don't they lay claim to God's willingness to, to strengthen them and help them on their journey through this life and on this planet? I don't understand it. I wish they knew what you and I knew. No. I wish they would hear the voice of God calling them home to a father who loves them. I wish they knew the power Christ can have over the storms in their lives. I wish the joy and the hope and the peace that Paul was always filled with. I wish they could feel it and embrace it for themselves. Our faith is good. Our God is good. Always. Our lives can be good because we believe in, in Christ. Because we believe in a Heavenly Father who wants nothing but the best for His children. I know the world is winning more souls than we are. But those souls will be empty and lost. They will not find joy and hope and the peace that we have. The darkness of doubt and love for the world will occupy the space that, that God would have gladly shined his light into. They could have it all. All of God if they just wanted him. He would be glad to sit in the boat with them while they, while they make their journey to the other side. He can calm the storms. He can get you safe to the other side. If only you would just believe in him. Now some will say, well, Brother Steve, they've chosen for themselves. But I would say to those who say such a thing, you're listening to Satan, and you need to turn him away. Yes, they've chosen for themselves. But that cannot mean that we leave it there. Christ refused to leave it there. And that's what they crucified him for. That's what Paul gave his life for. We must never be satisfied with the way it is. No, no, we must, we must preach and teach and we must live and live in such a way that it reveals Christ to this world so that the world cannot help but see the good that can be found in our Lord and Savior. To truly live, to truly live is to know who Christ is. There is no better life than that. Our Heavenly Father is the good Father who walks with His children throughout this life. Our Heavenly Father is the Father who waits at home patiently for that child to come back home after having done it all wrong and rejoices to see Him again, to have them back home. I pray and I hope you will too Someday the whole world will understand that the whole world will understand our Father is the one who wants to see them, who wants to see them to the other side. Whether the waters are rough or calm, that is what our faith can do. That is a gift from God. That is a gift from our Heavenly Father. To all who would believe him to be our God, our creator, our sustainer, and our redeemer. I close in prayer.
Our closing hymn is hymn number 235, Take the Name of Jesus We. Let's all stand as we sing all verses 235.